This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the third and the final lecture on irrecoverable and doubtful debts. Uh, remember, in the last lecture we went through example two. It's still on the screen. I'm now going to look at example three, which is the same business, Scylla, but uh, we're going into the second year. Then I can show you the full story. Uh, can I warn you of two things with example three? First of all, uh, example three, some people do find it a bit tricky. It's got everything in it that you could see. Remember, in your exam, you can't be asked to write up full T accounts. You can't be asked to do the full question. But everything in this question could be tested. So if you can work through this with me, uh, if you're happy when we get to the end, then you should be able to cope with anything that's asked in the exam. Uh, secondly, I'll say now, there's one entry I'll make as we go through, which some of you may be concerned about. I I'll tell you when we come to it. There's more than one way of showing the entries, but the way I'm going to show you is by far the easiest, the quickest, the safest for the exam. But you'll see what I mean when I come to it. However, because we're doing the following year, to avoid confusion, let me open up the T accounts again. At the end of the first year, we left a balance on receivables of 74,000. So we start the second year. There's a balance brought forward, a debit of 74,000. Uh, again, at the end of the first year, we had an allowance for receivables The balance was what? A credit balance of 12,560. Uh, and finally, uh, we had an irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense account. Uh, but if you remember, uh, if I can find it, there we are. Uh, yeah, uh, the balance was zero. We'd recorded the expense for the first year and then moved it to the statement of profit or loss. All right, now let's go through example three. During the year ended 31st December 2001, which is the second year, Scylla made sales on credit of 261,000 and had received cash from customers of 238,000. Okay, well, before we go any further, let's play bookkeeper, because it says the next line, these amounts have been entered into the receivables account and a balance extracted. So what would the bookkeeper do? Right back to one of the very first chapters. Uh, we make sales on credit, so the double entry, debit receivables, Credit sales. I'm not going to show a sales account, I'm going to stick to these three. But always, when we sell on credit, debit receivables, we'd received cash from the customers, 238. Debit cash, credit receivables, 238. And that's all the bookkeeper will have done. That's all the bookkeeper did in the earlier chapters. Uh, the bookkeeper may have noticed this allowance sitting there. Nothing to do with the bookkeeper. They probably don't even understand what it is. But we've come to the end of the year and we strike a balance. So what's the balance on receivables? 335. Seven, four. 97,000. So when the accountant arrives, we have a balance on receivables of 97,000. And notice the allowance for receivables, there's a balance still sitting there of 12,560. 
You know where that came from last year, but it stayed there, sitting there all year. Well, the accountant now needs to sort things out, and he says, on investigation, the following was discovered. Oh, uh, Paul had paid 2,200 of his previously recoverable debts. Ooh. If you remember, Paul was irrecoverable. We'd removed him. We, we thought he was dead and we were never going to get paid. Well, maybe a miracle's happened. Whatever uh, the reason, he suddenly paid us 2,200. George, last year, if you remember, George was doubtful. And he's still not paid the amount he was owed, and we've therefore decided he's now irrecoverable. We're never going to get it. Anne, well, Anne last year was doubtful. This year, in fact, she's paid all her money. Great. Uh, Ringo, a new one, he's owing 4,000 and he's irrecoverable. Make another new one, he's owing 6,000 and he's doubtful. And we've decided to carry on having a general allowance of receivables of 4%. However, although we go th before we go through all of those, there's a little note at the bottom. There's a problem. Something funny happened here. I said there's a lot involved in this question, but you could be tested on this a little bit. The amount received, first of all, from Paul is included in the total cash receipts for the year of 238. Now, think about this and listen carefully. We received cash of 238. And what does the bookkeeper do? Debit cash credit receivables. But that includes the money from Paul. And if you look at note A, Paul had paid us 2,200 of his previously irrecoverable debt. So included in that 238 is 2,200 from Paul. But the problem is this. Last year, we decided Paul was irrecoverable and we'd removed him. Paul didn't owe us anything. You know, if Paul had been the only debtor last year, if there was only Paul, last year we removed him. Actually, last year he owed us more, but whatever he owed us, we removed him and he owed us nothing. And if somebody owes us nothing, you can't debit cash. When he, when he suddenly pays us, you can't suddenly debit cash and credit receivables. That would be nonsense. But that's what the bookkeeper's done. Because the bookkeeper is a very common thing in real life. The bookkeeper's been told every time you get money from a customer, credit receivables. Paul was a customer. The bookkeeper doesn't know that we removed him and he owed nothing. So what should we do when we get the money? Well, last year, we had the expense of removing him. Had we known he was going to pay, we wouldn't have removed him. But it's too late now. Last year, we had the expense. When he comes to pay us, he didn't owe us anything anymore. It's a bit of extra income. It's like a negative expense. And what we should do, if ever an irrecoverable debt later pays us, we should debit cash, credit irrecoverable debts expense. It's like a negative expense. Last year, the expense of removing him. This year, a negative expense because he's paid us. So that's the entry that should have been made debit cash, credit irrecoverable. But the bookkeeper didn't know. The bookkeeper debited cash and credited receivables. They made a mistake. The accountants got to uh, correct it. They debited cash. Let me make it clear. 
if Paul had been the only one owing, and sorry, the, the only person, he didn't owe us anything because we'd removed him. The bookkeeper credited debit, credit, blah, 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 debited cash, credited receivables, but shouldn't have done. To correct it, the accountant takes it from there, debit receivables, and we're back to zero. And credit irrecoverable debts expense and negative expense. And so that's what we're going to do to correct the mistake Debit receivables, we should never have included it in the total. And credit irrecoverable debts. Debit receivables, credit irrecoverable debts, uh, 2,200. So that's the first example you've seen of correcting a mistake by the bookkeeper. But I hope that makes sense. Uh, before I leave it, though, that note, that dealt with Paul, um, but also Anne. The amount received from Anne was included in the total cash receipts for the year. Uh, look at note C. Anne had paid her debt of 2000 in full. And if you look back to last year, Anne was a doubtful debt. Well, remember, because she was doubtful, we hadn't removed her from receivables. We left her as still owing us 2000 Okay, we'd have an allowance. I'll worry about that later. But in receivables, we left her as still owing. She was only doubtful. And so when she pays the money, what do we do? Debit cash credit receivables, and she doesn't owe us. And that's what the bookkeeper's done. Uh, the money was included in the 238, and that's fine. The bookkeeper's done it properly. There's no correction to be made. Now, I'll worry about the allowance later. But as far as receivables were concerned, the receivables, we've now corrected Paul. There was no problem in receivables for Anne. However, having sorted that out, we now need to go through and see if there are any problems with other people. So let's run through. A, we've just dealt with. B, George has still not paid the 8,000 owing and must now be regarded as irrecoverable. Now, George last year was doubtful and so we'd left him as owing the money. We'd had an allowance, but we'd left him as owing the money. He's still included in receivables. He's still not paid. And so now we need to remove him. He's irrecoverable. And you know from the last section how to remove one. If it's irrecoverable, we credit receivables to remove it. 8,000. Debit. Irrecoverable debts expense. Now I said when I started this, some of you may be getting worried about one entry and that's this one. Some of you may be saying, oh, what about the allowance? George was doubtful. Well, fine he was. You can deal with this another way. The same end result I, I'll explain later, if it does worry you. But the safest, the quickest, the best way is for the moment to ignore allowance completely. We want to get receivables right. And if ever there's an irrecoverable, simply credit receivables to remove it, debit the expense. Carry on, C. We've dealt with Anne a minute ago, no problem. Uh, D, Ringo. He's a new one, but he owes us 4,000, is irrecoverable. Well, again, credit receivables, debit irrecoverable debts, expense. Whenever there's an irrecoverable, credit receivables, debit the expense account. 
Uh, Mick is owing 6,000 and he's doubtful, so in shortly that involves an allowance, but we'll leave the amount owing. So I have now sorted out the receivables. We corrected the bookkeeper's mistake and we've removed two receivables. And so the final balance on receivables, uh, the debit side 99,200. The missing figure, therefore, the balance, 8,12,87,200. I hope my arithmetic's right. And so there we are, receivables. There's the correct figure. There's the amount I'm trying to get, hoping to receive. But now we have to turn to the allowance and decide what allowance do we need at the end of the year. Here, always you will need workings. And what we need to know, at the 87,200 we're owed at the end of the year, how much is doubtful? Well, first of all, any specific allowance. Are any of those receivables specifically doubtful? Now, remember, uh, we dealt with A, forget him. B, B was doubtful, but he's certainly not anymore. We've removed him, no problem. Anne had paid, so she's not doubtful. Ringo was removed. Ah, the only one left is Mick. Mick is owing 6,000. He is doubtful. So we've left him in receivables, but we need an allowance, he's doubtful. In addition, general allowance, he says we want to carry on having a general allowance of 4% of remaining debts. So I did stress last time, be careful, you take whatever percent we're told of those debts that we think are okay. Well, at the end of the year, the receivables, 87,200. Included, though, we know Mick is a problem. And so, it's the other 81,200 that we think are okay. Well, 4% of that is 3248. And so at the end of the year, the total allowance we need is 9248. And so I'll show extracts from the statements, obviously, when we've finished. I want to show receivables, 87,200, less an allowance of 9248. There's a little problem. We've already got an allowance receivables account and there's 12,560 there. Now you know what that is. That's how much we needed at the end of last year, but it's just been sitting there ever since. It no longer makes any sense at all because the figure I want is 9248. Well, you have two choices, but the end result will be the same. If you want, remove the 12,560 because we, it's not there anymore. And so debit allowance, credit irrecoverable, and then create the figure we want, 9,248. More sensibly, and much better for the exam, is we just change it to what we want. What I mean is this. That's the allowance I want, but the existing balance what was it twelve five sixty? It's been sat there all year and is no longer needed. 
I want to change it to 9248. And so what am I going to do? If it's currently 12 and I want 9, we're going to reduce it by the difference. The decrease needed What is the difference? It's currently 12560 minus 9248. 3312. If I reduce the existing balance by 3312, I'll get the figure that I need. Let's do it. To reduce the balance, debit with 3312. And the double entry, just as when we created the allowance last year, we debited the expense. Here we're reducing the allowance. We credit irrecoverable debts expense. Credit irrecoverable debts expense, 3312. And before I say any more, just let's uh, check, see what balance we're left with. The balance we're left with at the end of the year the missing figure is the figure I wanted, I hope, 9248. Yeah. That's the figure we want at the end of the year. So the allowance, this is what, uh, the big reason I needed to do a second year. The allowance, you calculate what allowance we need at the end of this year. You adjust any existing allowance to get the figure we want. Here, I wanted a lower allowance, so we debit the allowance with the difference and credit the expense account. If I'd needed a bigger allowance, you know, if we'd have needed an allowance at the end of this year of 15,000, fine, we'd need to increase it. You'd credit the allowance to increase it and debit the expense with the cost. But do make sure you've got that. I'll, almost, I'll summarise at the very end, give you the rule, with almost certainly any exam questions. There'll already be an allowance from last year. You work out what allowance you need this year. And you adjust the existing allowance by the difference. If you increase it, credit allowance and debit the expense. If as here you're reducing it, debit the allowance, credit the expense. Uh, we've now finished the debits credits, but I will come back. Just one thing that may have been worrying some of you. But otherwise, the final balance on receivables, 87,200. That's the amount we're trying to get. The allowance, 9,248. I'll show an extract from the statement in a minute. But that will reduce the receivables to get the net figure for the um, statement. And finally... The total, what you might call net cost of what we've done. Debit is 12. The missing figure, 12,000 minus 22. Is 6488. That's the net cost of everything we've done, removing the, receive, uh, the recoverables. Uh, we've got some money from somebody who'd already been removed. We've reduced the allowance. But that net cost of everything, uh, the expense, as always, to the statement of profit or loss. Uh, the completeness, let me show you an extract from the statements. On the statement of financial position under current assets. Receivables, the balance on the receivables account is 87,200. Uh, less the allowance for receivables, 
the balance on the allowance account ended up at 9248. And so the final figure for receivables, 52, oh, nine. I better check my arithmetic. Not eight to seven two hundred minus nine two four eight. Yeah, that is right. So there's the final figure of receivables. Again, that breakdown has to appear. And of course, on the statement of profit or loss, under the heading expenses. Irrecoverable and doubtful debts expense. We show the net cost of everything we've done, which was 6488. There we are. Okay, well. Two things before I leave it. First of all, I did say earlier, some of you may be unhappy about one thing. And that was George. If you go back to B, George had still not paid the 8,000 owing and must now be regarded as irrecoverable. <coughs> now, George was doubtful last year Last year, we'd left him as owing the money, but because he was doubtful, he was included in that allowance. He's now irrecoverable. So I think clearly we need to remove George, you credit receivables. And I said that he's irrecoverable. Credit receivables, debit, irrecoverable debts expense. Now, some people quite understandably say, ah, oh, no, no, no. He's irrecoverable, so yes, remove him. But he was part of that allowance. So why not debit the allowance to remove, move him from the allowance? Now, don't let me confuse you. If you want to do that, do. Debit the allowance instead of the expense. But just see, it'll end up making no difference at all. Because if you do that, uh, then the allowance is lower. And to get the balance I want, it would mean increasing the allowance. Have a go yourself, work out the figures by all means. And what you'll find is the instead of reducing the allowance, you'll be increasing it, and you'll end up with the same net cost of 6488. It's just it gets messier. And so by far the best way in real life, and more importantly in the exams, if ever there's an irrecoverable, credit receivables, debit, uh, the expense, and everything will end up working. Uh, finally, nothing new, but I've said so many times, the chances of being asked debits, credits, and exam are tiny. You certainly can't be asked to do a full tier count. You can't be asked to go through the whole example three. Uh, but I haven't wasted your time because understanding each bit of it can be tested. But the majority of questions in the exam want to know what the expense is in the statement of profit or loss. Uh, they don't ask for the debits credits. They give you information, not so much as is it there, obviously. But they give you information about what's happened. And they simply want to know what's the total expense. Well, there are three things you're looking for. The total expense will be any irrecoverable debts.
any irrecoverable debts, there is a cost and expense. Unlikely, but if any previously irrecoverable have paid, like Paul, it's a negative expense. So cash received from previously irrecoverable reduces the expense. It's like a negative expense. But finally, the really important one is the change in the allowance for receivables. And this could be either way. If the allowance receivables is increasing, there's an extra expense. If, as in our example, the allowance for receivables is reducing, then it's a negative expense, it's a saving. And do remember that. You see, in our example, the irrecoverable debts uh, were George and Ringo, George and Ringo, a total of 12,000. Here there was cash received from a previously irrecoverable. That was Paul. Paul, no day. He was irrecoverable. We've removed him. And he then paid us 2,200. So that's a saving and negative expense. And finally, the change in uh, the allowance, so you'll still need to do workings for this, but we need an allowance of 9248. There was already an allowance of 12,560. Here, the change we reduced it by 3312. So because we reduced it, it's a negative expense. Had we increased the allowance, it would be an expense we'd add on. But what's the net cost of everything? 12,000 minus 2200 minus 3312. I hope I've got the same figure. Yes, I have. 6488. So please think about that. If you need, re-watch that lecture. Otherwise, do practice examples, but learn that. Uh, and make sure you are happy with what I mean by the change in allowance. Otherwise, that's it. And we've only one more adjustment to deal with, which is inventory, which... I think you'll enjoy.